Well, good day and welcome to you. It is July the 29th, and I hope wherever you happen to be, you are having a fantastic day. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome to Search for Signs. My name is Gary Whirling, and this is the channel where we always talk about the emergence of my tray and the Masters of Wisdom. We talk about why are they coming back, why is it important that they're coming back at this particular time, and of course, what does it mean for you and everyone else that they're doing this. Now, we also tie it into current events. We take a look at some of the major problems that are facing humanity. And with this information, hopefully, it will give you a better insight onto the problems that are facing humanity, like the environment, like social injustice, like the, the need for peace and those kind of things. And it will give you some insights on how you can actually uh, help uh, make the changes out there because it's going to be for each one of us to do something, whether it's a lot or a little. Now, also... Tying it into the current events of the time, you know, it hopefully will give you a better understanding of, of what's going on in the world today. Even if it doesn't do that, even if it gives you just a little bit of hope that we're going to get through this, that is probably more aligned with what I'm hoping that uh, you, the listener, will take away from these videos. So hopefully you'll stick around and hear some more videos. Uh, perhaps do your own investigation by looking at the links that I provided in the uh, description of these videos. Then you can start to answer your own questions for yourself. You can see if there's any truth to this for yourself and, you know, look at some of these miracles that have been going on and you can investigate and see if what I'm saying is true. Are they happening to people of every single religious group? Are they happening to people of no particular religious faith? Are they leaving people with a greater sense of hope? Those kind of things. And you can answer your own questions and see if there's any truth to that for yourself. Then, if you want to look at some of the other uh, background information about the teacher, about the emergence of these masters and so forth, to see if there's any truth to that for yourself as well, there are links in the description where you can start to find more information about that, perhaps. Or, more importantly, I think, looking at the problems, like the environmental problem, like the need to end hunger, the need to bring about justice, of course, the need to bring about peace and end war, are these problems slash opportunities for humanity to come together as one and finally realize the truth that we are one? So that, I think, is really what I hope that you take away from this program. And, you know, even though people comment all the time and it's about Christianity and it's about this biblical verse and this is this and this is that and whatever, blah, 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 blah. I don't see this information as religious. Uh, you know, I have to kind of step into the into the trench with you know with this information a little bit because that's where people's headspace is when it comes to information like this. They see it only from a religious standpoint, but from my point of view, it is not religious. It has nothing to do with religion, and so therefore, if you but knew my my intention of putting these videos up, you would realize that I have no interest in in converting you to a different type of religion. <laughs> so, but I am hoping that it will spark something in you that you will see that you need to do something along with everybody else to help bring about the changes. I hope this sparks something in you that you'll start to resonate with the truth that's latent within your own heart too, not just mine, but in your own heart that we are in fact one. You know, And then I hope that just like me, even though these problems seem so daunting, every day it just seems to keep getting worse and worse and worse. I'm hoping that because you know a little bit about this information and you heard this and maybe looked at it and investigated it for yourself, that you will have a little bit more hope than you would have had you not known this information, that maybe possibly humanity can get through this. So that is my hope. Now, I always like to leave the floor open for questions, and I have a I think I have one question or two. I don't know. I have, I have a question to cover and then I have some comments to cover. And I do like questions and invite people to have questions to ask them. Um, and then it also helps all of us to understand this information a little bit more. So hopefully you'll, uh, you know, listen to the question and answer. I always try. I don't claim to know the answer to everything or claim to know the truth about stuff. So, but in my own little way, I'm trying to answer these questions, so hopefully it will help. Now, the first um, 
comment, actually. It's, this is a comment, but I do think this is something that we can talk about. It uh, says, global warming is a scam to scare people into sending money to different groups and to take away liberties from everyone. Okay, so I guess my question back to Benjamin would be, what liberties are you referring to, per se? Because the people who are marching for climate, you know, you know to stop climate uh, change and global warming... What liberties are they advocating being taken away from people? The liberty to be able to chop down any tree that they want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, they're just looking for um, perhaps more fuel-efficient cars, I guess, those kind of things. I mean, there's all these, and we're going to talk about this because this is something, you know, we're going to talk about the liberties here in a second because I, it, it has to do with something that I'm, I'm really starting to discover for myself when it comes to listening to both sides the right and the left. So we'll talk about that in a second. Now, in terms of global warming, believe it or not, whatever doesn't really concern me what your belief is. Um, the masters would tell you, and you don't have to believe what I'm saying is true. I believe what they're saying is true, but that really the people who believe climate change is a problem and those people who deny climate change are both right and both wrong, actually. <laughs> you know, it might come as some surprise to you. Now, because the people who deny climate change are saying it's just a bunch of natural, it's just a natural, you know, timing of the earth, and therefore it's just getting warmer because of nature. Now, the masters would say that there is actually some truth to that. It's not the whole truth, but there is some truth to that. That 20% of climate change or global warming is caused by natural causes. The other 80% is man's misuse of the environment. So it's, it's not equal, in, it's not 50-50, it's 80-20 you know, is a pretty significant, where if we weren't doing the damage to the environment that we're doing, yes, it would be getting a little bit warmer, but it wouldn't be nearly as severe or as rapid of, and as destructive as it really is. Now, be that as it may, you know, the, the, the narrative of the environment is polarizing people for or against it, but in reality, we are damaging the environment in an alarming rate. And according to the masters, if we do not do something about the environment, it's going to affect each and every one. It's actually going to kill all humanity off. And that's how serious it is. In fact, uh, the master who, who I read his articles from all the time actually said in one article I read not too long ago that even the most dire predictions of global warming, if we do not do something about it, the reality of, the, of our future is far worse than even they're thinking. And, but here's the rub, is according to Maitreya and these masters, that's not even the most damaging thing that we are doing to the environment, believe it or not. And you're not hearing people talk about this, really, because the narrative about the environment is all about climate change, for or against Actually, it has to do with nuclear radiation. And it's the reason why nobody's talking about it on the right and the left is because we can't see this pollution. We can't taste it. We can't smell it. We can't, you know, it, we, it, we're not aware of it. So therefore, it doesn't exist to us in our minds. But yet, the damage done by nuclear radiation is what's killing humanity off. It's killing the animal kingdom off. It's, it's, making our oceans sick, and it's actually making our whole planet sick, really, to the point where we're, we're in danger of killing ourselves in that way. Now, the question then would be, what do we do first to solve the problems, whether it is the problem of nuclear radiation or, or climate change or whatever? Well, Maitreya would say, actually, we need to take a step back and look at ourselves first and do something amongst ourselves before we can even begin to tackle the environment. We can talk about tackling the environment, but it's not going to, no good really is going to be done until humanity learns to share, actually. That's where this information fits in. That's why this information is so important. If you're someone who's passionate about the environment, passionate about social justice, look at what the teacher is saying. You don't have to believe in what I believe him to be. But see if there's any truth to this for yourself. He says, without sharing, there could be no justice. Without justice, there could be no peace. And without peace, there could be no future. 
But why is sharing so important when it comes to the environment, right? Well, we talk about it from time to time. Well, nations have to learn to trust one another in order to tackle this. The reason why no nation is doing anything is because the other nations aren't doing it. Well, if they're not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. If China's going to pollute, well, then what, what should the United States do? Why should the United States be the only one that takes the hit? You know what I mean? And vice versa and so forth and so forth. Nations of the world have to stop competing on some level and be a little bit more cooperative. It doesn't have to be perfect in order to solve the environmental problem effectively. Now, then it begs the question, and, and this is where I don't think this information is religious, is, and the importance of this information, it, you know, the, um, is there any truth that sharing will bring about justice and bring about peace and trust? Well, we talk about it on this video all the time, and I bring it up because I think it's so important that we need to keep talking about it every single time we can. Think about it, investigate it, educate, it, educate ourselves on it, and see if there's any truth to it. But does sharing bring about justice? Well, historically, there's evidence that it does. And it was done right after World War II with the Marshall Plan. And the narrative in this country of sharing would be, oh my gosh, that's communism, that's socialism. I mean, the extreme right, radical right, is accusing the left of being communists. They're even accusing one of the most right wing centrist democrat presidents that we've ever had as being a communist there's nothing in his in his policies about com anyway but they're throwing that that in his face right so therefore it must be bad well actually the united states a very capitalistic country was the only nation to start the principle of sharing at some point it, they did it it's called the marshall plan you can look it up you can investigate it i have a link in the description where you can actually go and and see a historical view of it. Now they take a very, um, they don't take the view that I'm taking that it brought about peace, but it, it's irrelevant. If you look at what happened after it, look at it with your own eyes, you will see that it did bring about peace actually. So even though they're taking it from more of a, this was a Pax Americana foreign policy to stop the spread of communism in Europe, that might've been their intention. I don't know. I don't even care at this point. It's too, you know, it's been so long. What does it matter? You know, but the end result of it was it did bring about trust amongst the nations that participated in it. If you look at your European history, uh, prior to the Marshall Plan, nations like Germany, France, England, were. it was just a few years prior to this, or a few months even maybe, that they were at war with one another. Has Germany attacked France since then? Has the United States invaded England? Has England gone back and tried to take back the colonies? I mean, has any of that happened? Well, I mean, do you want me to answer it for you? You already know the answer. Of course, no. And it's because these nations learned to cooperate better. And it started with the principle of sharing. And the only problem is, is it only lasted for just a little bit of time. And it didn't happen globally. If it happened globally, we'd be living in a totally different world today. Nations would have trusted one another a long time ago. We would have stopped competing against one another a long time ago. This, this whole nightmare situation that we're all living in would have been something that would have never happened, you know, but yet we're living in the world that we're living in today. So you look at the, the end result of the, um, the ways of all of our world leaders and our nations and our corporations and blah, 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 with what they've been doing. This is the result of, of it right here. But the result of the Marshall Plan was trust. So that's where, if you really look at this information, you might be able to see it from a different angle other than religious and say, yes, I think there could be some truth. I don't believe anything about what he's saying about his own experiences with Maitreya. I don't believe anything about what he's saying about the turn away to teacher. I don't even believe about these miracles. But yeah, I could see that the Marshall Plan bring about peace. Oh, okay. So what? Deny. I don't care if you agree with everything else. Look at that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And my only thing is if we just were to speak to our leaders, maybe if enough of us started to talk about it, they would actually try it, you know, but even those people who are really concerned about the environment aren't seeing that we have to do something else first in order to solve it, because it's not going to be one nation that solves the environmental problem while other nations don't do anything. It won't, you know, and like I say, even if every nation on the planet, except for the nations of Asia, went totally green it would still be a critical problem because those nations aren't doing it about it. We have to, every nation's going to have to step up and do something. So that's why sharing is so important. It is the most important thing that we can do. It would end hunger, 
bring about justice, but it would also bring about trust amongst these nations. So anyway, something to think about. Now, in terms of the liberty portion of what your comment is, um, for one, I don't know how solving the environmental problem is going to take away anybody's liberties. I think it will ensure the, the survival of the human race, but, you know, some of us have to come to, the, to our own conclusions on these truths in our own time. But the, the thing of it is, this is, my, this is my point, is there's narratives going on with nearly everything. Now, there are narratives that are based on truth and there are narratives that are based on lies. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, you can, you know, in whatever, whatever side you lean on, you would think the other one was lying, the other one, you know. But let's just look at it from maybe a more holistic viewpoint, okay? Now, I tend to trust the, the left's policies, the policies, not the, not the politicians, the policies, as being more beneficial toward humanity than the rights to some degree. But I'm not talking about the, our political leaders. I'm talking about the people who follow these policies. So I'm talking about you know humankind, right? You got those right-wing conservative folks that resonate with the right. You know, in this country, it's the Republican Party or the Trumpism or whatever you want to call it too. Uh, and then you have the left leaning uh, thinking people who more are aligned toward the democratic side. But I think both parties are corrupt. Both parties don't have the people's best interests at heart. And, but there might be a scattering of few good people on maybe both sides, but for the most part, the parties themselves are quite corrupt. And, but what are they, what are the people fighting for? Well, on the right, they're fighting for what they think is freedom. Like you said, liberties, right? That's the reason why they don't want the government's imposing its will on them, although, we, although the government imposes its will on its people all the time, right? They have a tendency when, when it's the right imposing their will on the people, that's okay. But when there's a Democrat in office, well, then that's, that's fashion, whatever. But it, that's the narrative, right? And then you look at the left that <clears throat> is fighting for a little bit of justice, a little bit of equality in their own way. They're both sensing the need we need freedom, we need, but we need justice at the same time. And Maitreya is going to say, because he has already said it, uh, but he's going to eventually say it to everyone so we can hear it, is from him, is, and he'll explain a lot better than I can, is we, you know, we need both. They're like two wheels on the same cart. The cart's not going to go if it just has one wheel. That's the problem. You know? And so, you Truth, you know, I guess my question would be for liberties or people who think that the government's, you know, you know they, they want their freedom. What is true freedom for you? Is it owning a gun? Is that true freedom? Is being able to say whatever you want, whenever you want, and to him or whatever you want, no matter how hurtful it is or whatever, is that true freedom? Or is there something else that's true freedom, you know? And then looking at justice or whatever is, you know, let's kind of put it in their park, you know, is racial justice and that, if that was it, is that true justice? Is that going to bring about peace in the world? You know, I think it's a part of it, but I don't think it's the end all and be all of what justice really is from what the masters are saying. So what I, you know, what I think it starts with freedom, right? True freedom of thought, true freedom to be yourself, true freedom to truly express yourself as the, within the divinity within yourself without somebody else imposing anything else on you. And that's individually, group-wise, societal-wise, governmental-wise, and so forth. You know, that's true freedom. But you have to live harmlessly amongst, you have to know the laws of life in order for that to happen, which harmlessness is a part of it. You can't harm other people because of your quote-unquote freedom and have that really be true freedom. Just as looking at the justice side of it, what is true justice? Well, it's true justice when everyone is seen as divine, really, and, and the governments and society as a whole see it as that, to see the need to take care of, of each and every one of us equally, you know, where there's not this huge disparity of the wealthy and the extreme poor and even people starving to death, but everybody has something to eat. Everyone has something to wear, a place to live. You know, being educated in their own way, you know, I mean, to be free, but looked at it as you can't have true freedom without true justice, you know, 
to say in this country that, that we're a free country is a lie. I live in this country. I know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you do or not, but it's a myth. You know, if you don't want to say it's a lie, it's a myth. It hasn't happened yet because we're, there's not true justice in this country, you know? So, you know, these are just basic examples of what true freedom and true justice is. I mean, it's a lot deeper than that. It will continue to be ongoing. It's not something that just is, okay, now everybody's got freedom or everyone's got justice. You know, it's the art of justice. It's the art of freedom. You know, it's an, it's ongoing. It never ends, you know, just like sharing. It's an art form. It's not, okay, now we got sharing. That's it. We don't have to worry about it anymore. So, but it has to do with the fact that we are one, that we all inhabit this planet. We all cherish this planet. We all cherish ourselves, our future, our children's future. And therefore we should be allowed to live like that. You know, we shouldn't have to live in a world that's being sick because some corporation wants to make more money. You know, that's not true freedom. That's not liberty. That's tyranny is what it is, you know, in, in a lot of ways. And so I think that that term is being thrown around. The political narratives are being turned around where people don't even know what's right up and down and right and left and red and blue. It's we're all just we don't know. You know what I'm saying? We're lost. You know, so it's all you know, I think that that my trail will sift through some of this stuff and we'll start to see the truth of who and what we are and what really is important and what we need to do first. And I think that's where he fits into this. That's why this information is so important, I think. Now, I do want to end the conversation with reading an article by one of these masters. You don't have to think that it's coming from a master in order for these articles to have some kind of value, whether it's a lot or a little for yourself. If you see these, or, you know, when I read these articles out, if you see there might be some truth to it for yourself, I do recommend going to the Share International website and reading these articles for yourself. You know, you can internalize the words for yourself. You can see it in a lot better way in, through you reading it and with using your eyes, you're going to retain it and it's going to make more sense. And it's going to, it's, you know, your intuition can be better suited for you if you're doing it yourself. But because most of us, and I know most of us don't have access to uh, Benjamin Crum's books, and a lot of us don't know about the Share International website, you know, that's why I'm reading this out. Trying to get the ideas of the masters out to the public. That's my, that's my goal in reading these articles out. So, this article was written, it was entitled Opportunity and Challenge. That's what caught my eye. I was like, huh, let's read about this. So, the problems which assail mankind are many and difficult to solve. Some of them are dangerous and require immediate action. Without help and advice, it is unlikely that man would act quickly or adequate enough to avoid catastrophe. For those reasons alone, it is necessary for their elder brothers to come forward now as advisors and teachers. It is thus that we shall take our places among you and help you to restore your world. Be not afraid that our coming will reduce your standing as men. We come to aid only. Your freedom of will is cherished by us and will never be infringed. Many there are now who doubt that we exist, for many our coming is but a fairy tale. Soon, however, men will see that the fairy tale come to life and will know that we have ever stood behind you, guarding and protecting you, awaiting patiently the day when we can walk among you openly once more. As we enter one by one your life, we see it as our sacred duty to help you in every possible way. From long experience, we know the ways of life, the knowledge and the gifts so hardly won. We shall place before you for your edification and comfort. We shall show you your past history. Events many thousands of years old will rise freshly to your astonished eyes and you will realize the ancient lineage of men. You will realize, too, the glories which have been lost, and strive to recapture the forgotten achievement. Thus will it be, and thus will you know a new humanity and a new purity. When you see the heights from which you come, you will surely take stock of yourselves and question the reasons for your plunge into anarchy and strife. 
These, you will find, are inherent in the growing materialism which age by age has involved you to deeply for your good and caused you to forget the plan. Now, once more, must you recognize this and take the path which leads only to the light. Much depends on men making the right decisions now for never have men stood in greater danger. We watch and await our opportunity to extend the hands of friendship and succor, sure in the knowledge that they will be warmly grasped. We, your elder brothers, see this time as one of double blessings. As hierarchy do, we now return openly to the world, the higher evolution beckoning us upwards, and you, our younger brethren, provide a field of service and challenge which we take up with joy. The plan and its implementation through men is our ever-present concern. And men have much to learn and to teach in, revelation, in relation to the lower kingdoms. Although not openly, we are here in growing numbers. Soon you will see us and be inspired to emulate our ways. Our cooperation will replace your co competition. Our breadth of view, your intolerance. Our love will overcome your violence and hate. Thus will it be, and thus will you turn again to the plan and make it your own. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.